Georgetown at Syracuse. This is Wednesday night action. Marco, who do you like and why? Well, I'm going to like the Syracuse side. And this is a case where I believe one team is overrated, the other team's underrated, and it's giving us great line value. All right, so let me guess. You like Syracuse. So I'm thinking Syracuse is underrated. Mm -hmm. Georgetown's overrated. Why Syracuse underrated? Syracuse is underrated because what people are looking at is the present. They don't look at the whole body of work. The present is that just two games, they've won two in a row, but prior to that they had lost four in a row and literally fell off the map. So did they lose four in a row or did they, they win? No, they lost four in a row. They opened the season with uh, 18 straight wins, lost to Pitt, and then lost their next three games. They're, you know, they were 18-4 and four before they won the last two games. They won at Connecticut, okay. and then they beat uh, South Florida on uh, Saturday. All right, so those four losses happened. Is there any particular reason why they're not as damning to Syracuse as maybe some people might think? Well, the Pitt game was one of those games that it, it was a crazy game. You know, a big game, Big East, big Monday game. They rolled into Pittsburgh. A tough road game. It was. And right. remember, that was the game, the 19 nothing. They were down to open, and then they come clawing back to make it 19 So that's an understandable loss. But when you have those type of games, and I'm a type of guy – um, RJ, when we break down schedules and how teams perform in preceding games, you have to look at some of those games because losses are, every loss isn't the it's same. It's like a hangover effect. Exactly. And if I recall, on one of our videos, you faded Syracuse the next Saturday. The very next what. game, absolutely. And so they went through their four-game slide. They finally beat Connecticut last Wednesday. But, but let's dig in a little bit because I want to make sure I understand this. I totally get them losing that second game, the hangover effect. So now you're saying there's two misleading scores. One, Pitt's very tough at home. People probably aren't giving Pitt maybe the credit they fully deserve. And number two, the hangover effect. But what about three and four? Well, three and four, you know, every team goes through a, a season where there's some point in time where there's a little bit of a, you know, an ebb and flow where your team gets out of sync. Syracuse was that. They, they had some close games, but they came up short. Uh, it's just... You can't always explain the losses, but they had their slump. All right, so then here's my question. Is this a, sometimes in college basketball there's a situation where a team's, you know, ten and one, twelve and two, whatever, and they haven't they've only played two tough games and they lost both of mm -hmm. them. It's almost like a fighter, the first twelve games, uh, or fights, they don't fight anyone, they fight two people, they lose twice. Twelve and two looks good, but they've been exposed. When you look at Syracuse's first what was it, 16 wins or whatever? 18. 18 wins. Were there wins in there that, that, that can objectively tell you as a handicapper this is a really good team? Well, basically almost any win in the Big East is, is going to be a legitimate win. So how win. many of those 18 were Big East? Uh, they started the season at least three or four of them before they got to Pitt. So three or four Big East wins in a row, four, and they, they clearly ran a table out of conference lost four, and then they've had two wins now? They have two and wins. And what's your take on that? Well, the, first, it, the most important one is the first win once you get past you know, a losing streak. And it's, it's a thing of confidence like anything else. When everything's working, it's the same way with us in handicapping, you know, RJ. When I'm seeing the card well, everything works. But when you're losing, you have a little bit of a confidence you know, factor, and it makes you think about things that you, you look at games and sometimes – you second guess things and it can be the same way with a basketball team you got a team that's in a slump and all of a sudden you don't got everybody stepping up to take that shot they might be throwing an extra pass around but once you get off the snide so to speak you start to build the momentum back and our job as handicappers is to find the value before everybody else does. Mm -hmm. You want to jump on the teams that are underrated, and then whenever they are surging, you want to ride them before Vegas catches up to them. So when you see these two wins, and you discount the four wins partially, and then you acknowledge the 18-0, you think we have an underrated team that's trending upwards. We do. And what I like about this scenario is the second win, even though it was a blowout, the public the public, I like to say John Q. Public, is not going to put a lot of stock in that because it was against South Florida. That is one of the easy spots on the Big East. The Big East is right now, if the season ended today, most of the experts agree 11 of the Big East teams would make March Madness, and that would be unheard of. So that tells you how deep this conference is. But the fact that Syracuse is coming home, 
now this is the first game back home since that losing streak. They're going to want to you know, continue that. And we talked about last week the theory about statement games. And this is where that would apply. This is Syracuse statement game back to first their fans at the Carrier Dome and the rest of the Big East, that we're back, we didn't go anywhere. All right, so what I like about the way you've broken this down, really, if you think about it, if you ask a handicapper, why do you like Syracuse? And they say, well, I think Syracuse is underrated. I think Georgetown's overrated. That means value, I'm batting it. That makes sense. But what we want to do is, after with your 31 years of experience, is what are you seeing that causes you to think that? Now, it all makes sense with Syracuse. Now, with Georgetown, why are they overrated? Well, because right now they're the now team. They've won five in a row in the Big East, so they've got you know the winning streak going there. They won a similar type ball game. They went to Villanova getting the same type of line and beat a Villanova team. So again, to bring in John Q. Public to help us here, you're going to look at this game and say, if Georgetown can go to Villanova and win, and Villanova beat Syracuse, there you go. Georgetown's going to be able to beat Syracuse. But I is it makes perfect sense. Is is you've got a team a little underrated, you got a team a little overrated, and you got a Syracuse team that you're almost certain to get full focus and effort from. I've got Syracuse winning this game 74-65. They're going to be laying four and a half tomorrow night's the early line. Uh, I think there's great value uh, in this game. Now, in just real quick, in college basketball, what do you give a, a good team's home court? A good team in college basketball, I give five points for it. So this is almost, they're saying, break even teams. Yes. So. It sounds like I think you think they probably are even teams about, but you just think Syracuse is going to be extra motivated. So like you would say this line should be seven and a half. Absolutely. All right. It's your turn to continue the conversation, the comments section with Marco and me. And next up, we're going to be breaking down a Thursday night NBA TNT game.